Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about traffic mirroring in AWS. And the reason that you would want to do this is, say you have an EC2 instance that is exhibiting some strange behavior and you want to see what kind of network communications are taking place between that EC2 instance and other instances in your VPC or egress to the internet. And so Amazon released a service called AWS Traffic Mirroring uh, close to a year ago at this point. There are a couple guides you can follow, including some on the AWS website. And unfortunately, they kind of just stop when you get to the point of actually analyzing traffic that you would see in your traffic mirror. So we're going to go a little bit past the typical guide and actually look at some of the data we can get. So I'm going to walk through the setup here and it's very simple. It is three EC2 instances that you see and they're all of the T3A.micro instance type. The reason that I have chosen the T3A instance type is because that is built on the Nitro system, which is required for AWS traffic mirroring to take place. So I am actually SSH'd into all three of those EC2 instances, as you see here. And what I'm going to do is basically walk you through my scenario. So the recipient is going to be where the actual mirror gets sent to, and the sender is going to be a fake compromised machine and I'm going to generate traffic from that machine and then the wildcard is just going to be another system within the VPC and I will generate some traffic between the infected machine and the wildcard machine as well. So we're going to go ahead and go over to the VPC service and set up our traffic mirror. So first things first, uh, you'll notice that these are in the following order and this is not the order that you actually use so I don't know why they decided on this but I'm going to open up mirror targets because that's what we're going to set up first and then I'm going to set up the mirror filter and finally the mirror session. So the traffic mirror target uh, requires me to create a new target and I'm going to simply call that target one and the network interface is going to be the um, ETH0 belonging to that recipient uh, EC2 instance. So I'm going to go over to ETH0 and we see that that is ENI-043. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select that as the target, ENI-043. And we'll go ahead and create that. So next we need to actually set up a filter. And the reason that we need to set that up is because nothing will show up in this mirror uh, unless you explicitly state that it is to be accepted. Um, and so I'm going to kind of walk you through what that actually means, but I am going to first of all set some reject rules because I have active SSH sessions uh, to three of these boxes and I don't really want to see SSH traffic at all. It's just going to be confusing. So I'm going to filter that out and of course SSH is over port 22 um, and I'm just going to call this uh, no SSH traffic. Um, and then I'm going to add the inbound rules. So basically I'm going to set this as reject, source port will be 22, and then the destination cider will be all IP addresses. And we'll set that for the destination as well. And we'll add another rule, and that will also be reject, but then the destination port uh, will be 22. And then I will set up my outbound rules, uh, which again we're going to reject 22. And we're going to add a rule to accept all traffic. So first we're going to block, we're, we're going to reject 22 and then we're going to accept everything else. Uh, and I am not adding this to my inbound rules on purpose. I wanted to demonstrate that these rules need to be bi-directional or else you're only going to get one side of the traffic, which is kind of useless when you're doing traffic analysis. And so now I have to create the traffic mirror session itself, and that is super easy. Just go ahead and click that, and we're going to call this session one. And then the mirror source is just going to be the 056. And if we go back to our EC2 instances, you'll see that that's just ETH0 on our compromised machine. Uh, again, 056. And then we'll make the mirror target target one. Give this just a session number. I'm going to give it session number one, and the filter is going to be our no SSH traffic. And there you go. So what I'm going to do now is start a raw TCP dump filtering out port 22 traffic on the box that is going to be the recipient of the mirrored traffic. And then what I can do is go over to my quote unquote infected machine and generate some traffic. I'll just do something simple like curl google.com. And as you can see, a whole bunch of stuff showed up. Now, I can't really see the payload at all, 
um, which is not great. It would be nice to actually see the get request. I see that there it was a get request, uh, but I don't actually see the body or any reply or anything like that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to output this to a file, and I will do that by using the following command. So you can just see it's a dash w and then whatever the file name will be dot pcap and I will run the exact same test curlgoogle.com and now we can control C and of course we want to transfer this over to my local machine uh, so that I can analyze it using Wireshark and you can just use the SCP command for that and then we'll move that to my desktop real quick and open it in Wireshark so we see that get request made and it's made to uh, google.com as we can see there so the interesting thing about this and I mentioned it earlier is that you don't actually see the body and that's because we're not accepting inbound traffic in our traffic mirror um, and in order to do that we can basically just modify the filter that's actually one of the nicest things about this is that you can modify that filter in place without having to restart the session so we'll go ahead and close this Wireshark window and modify the filter so we can basically just add another inbound rule uh, and I'll copy this cider block because I'll be referencing that in just a moment and we don't care about the source port uh, nor the destination port range and we will just accept traffic from all IP addresses so now we can just add that rule and as you can see here these numbers are in order um, they're going to reject the stuff that we have first again that's SSH traffic we don't care about and then we'll finally accept everything else um, so that should be good to go so I am logged back in to the recipient machine and I'll go ahead and start another TCP dump uh, and this time I will call it session 2.pcap and we'll go over to our fake compromised machine and generate that same traffic. So we modified the filter and we'll go ahead and take a look at that get request and I'll follow the TCP stream and now we actually see the HTTP 301 response and this is the value when doing something like traffic mirroring and the reason I say that is because you actually see the entire TCP stream uh, and you can see if there's any second stage malware downloaded if there was a binary that was downloaded by this client after a get request was made to a malicious domain then you could potentially carve that out and then do some malware analysis on that so I wanted to do one last thing before I close out this demo and what we basically just looked at was egress traffic meaning an EC2 instance that was making get requests out to the internet but what happens if they were trying to communicate to other hosts within the VPC well we can go ahead and stage a test for that and so I'm going to go over to this other system that we haven't actually touched yet and I'm going to start a netcat listener on port 80 so I can re-log into our recipient machine and start a new TCP dump outputting that to session 3.pcap and I have my listener ready to go and I can go over to my fake compromised machine so basically what I'm going to do is just echo the string malware to our wildcard system over port 80. And as you can see that shows up and now I can finally close this TCP dump session and transfer it over. So as you can see session 3.pcap is on the desktop and we will basically just look for that send packet that was sent to and it's actually the first packet uh, that was sent over to our wildcard machine that again was just an internal system on the network and if we follow the TCP stream we see the string malware so basically this simulates uh, lateral movement in a VPC and if you suspected something like that doing a traffic mirroring session would be a great first step in analysis so that's about as deep as I wanted to get into this demo. So I hope this video was informative and hopefully you can find your own use cases for AWS traffic mirroring in the future. Thanks for watching.